Greetings from Bermuda, this is BDL Army. Welcome back to Fabled Lands, where we are currently exploring the lands of Golnir in search of a dragon. So, let's go. Uh, I guess we don't know for sure that this is where the dragon is, but I'm guessing that there's a pretty good chance that that's the case. Uh, oh, we did want to check whether we had the, um, the amulets. An amulet of protection. That's not what we want, is it? We are looking for a scarab amulet. That does ring a bell. That does ring a bell. But none of these things are a scarab amulet. So I guess we didn't get it. Uh, so maybe north is where we would get the scarab amulet from. Uh, let's truck through the mainland this time. Let's see what we can find on our way. A small stranger. You strike up a conversation with the dwarf who is going in the same direction. He works as a jester in the wintertime, usually spending a month at each castle he visits. My jokes and tricks mean I am much in demand. And in the summer? Ah, uh, alas, no one has time for feasts when the weather is fine. His friendly wit inspires you. It seems the dwarf enjoys your company as well. Before you part ways, he presents you with a gift. A potion of comeliness. Nice, so, uh, charisma plus one. Use before making the ability roll or before entering into combat as one charisma for that roll or combat only. Okay, nice. Let us make a move along the main road. The road to the coast carries a constant traffic of trade goods to and from the hinterland, and we encounter a merchant caravan. The merchants have plenty of goods to trade. Items without a buying price are not stocked, but you can still sell such a thing if you have it. We only brought 62 shards with us. Uh, Cured venison. A dried and salted meal that would be indispensable to an adventurer if it wasn't worth its weight in shards. Yellow dye. Is this something that could be useful? I'm not going to spend 60 shards on it though when I've only got 62, so we will continue to travel north to Trilius's Inn. An inn with low overhanging eaves nestles in the lee of a hill beside the bleak whistling heath. A sign hanging outside the inn proclaims, Civilization stops here. Surely you risk offending travellers coming from the other direction, you say to the innkeeper, a friendly man named Troilus. With a beaming smile, he leads you to the other side of the sign. The same words are written there. I flatter everyone, offend no one. It is a good philosophy of life. Troilus charges one shard a day for board and lodging. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, um, let's buy some drinks. You ever hear a storyteller sitting on a turnstile regaling the children from a nearby village with his tall tales? He tells the story of a kindly old wizard who found a little dwarf asleep under a bush. He took the dwarf as his apprentice, but after only a month, he woke up to find that the dwarf had stolen a suit of magic armor. This armor was empty, but could still move and fight because it contained an elfin ghost. As long as the visor was never opened, the ghost could not escape, and it had to do whatever the dwarf wanted, the storyteller says to the children. Leave. Okay, I wonder if we, uh, do we head back to the castle and try and get back into the inner keep? Uh, because if there are more quests there, which it sounds like there may have been, <clears throat> we could pick those up as well. Um... I'm suspecting we might need a quest to actually find that tower, but I don't know for sure. On the other hand, I don't know if we will get back in. Let's try while we're here. Uh, the region between Delpton and Castle Raven is a pat patchwork of tranquil fields and meadows. It seems that nothing intrudes on the slow, contented pace of daily life hereabouts. Except for a rascal. You meet a youth who shamelessly confesses to all sorts of daring crimes. His stories give you some ideas of your own. He seems to like you, and before you part ways, he gives you a potion of stealth. Everybody's giving me potions of, of stuff. Our inventory must be, <laughs> yeah, nearly full. We got a potion for every occasion right now. Uh, okay, let's go back to the castle, yeah, and see whether we can get back. Uh, we're gonna have to do another charisma roll, which we did. 
We may have to do another charisma roll to get in here. Uh, I thought it was much harder last time. Maybe not. Request an audience in pursuit of a quest. Ah, okay. So we can take multiple quests. Uh, so we took slaying on a monster, slaying a monster last time. Uh, so spying on her foes. I desire you to go to Utaku, says Vanna. The Utakin are said to be steeped in decadence. I am advised that they no longer pose a military threat. See if this is true. Accept the mission. The audience is in an end. You bow and withdraw. Okay. Uh, that's actually only medium difficulty. But Ataku is way over there. And that's... Uh, I think that's a, a rank 5 zone. Hmm. But maybe we can get there without too much danger. Anyway, more audiences in pursuit of quests. Make a map. The mountains to the, of the north are said to be the broken backbone of the dead god Harkoon, who lies across the width of the world, says Vanna. Most people do not dare to venture there, and no map has ever been made showing the paths, valleys, and hidden passes. Oh, is it tough? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess I figured it might be. Uh, we will accept the mapping mission. I shall bring you that map, my lady. What else can we do for you, my lady? Uh, denounce the traitor. So Debrumus takes you to the far side of the room. Rumor has it that there is a plot against the Baroness, says the Seneschal. However, I lack enough information on the matter. An outsider could be useful to gather some clues unnoticed, find out who might be behind it, and expose them to the throne. Nod. I shall keep my eyes open, said Debrumus. Now the other one was pay a load of money, which we almost certainly can't do, but let's see if we can find out how much she actually wants. Um... Pay a cash tribute. You lose all my money. You present the Baroness with 58 shards. What is mere wealth, you declare gallantly. I exist only to serve you, my lady. So de Brumus accepts the money on Vanna's behalf, as it is not seemly for one of high noble birth to handle the coins of merchants. You are escorted from the court and fetched back later for a banquet. If injured, recover your stamina points up to the limit of your normal unwounded score. The next day you awaken refreshed and ready for any adventure. What? I paid 58 shards for nothing. I was robbed again. This Baroness is a thief. And if I find who is plotting against her, I am going to join them and I am going to come back and assassinate her. After I've turned in all my other quests, obviously. Uh, now I've got no money. What a massive pain. God, okay. Leave. Um, take the road. Yeah, I can't sail because I don't have any money anymore. Um, I should probably go get some. River Road. An eventful journey. Did we have a house in here? Yes. I'm kind of getting through my stash a little bit. Which is mildly concerning. I mean, I guess I've still got quite a bit. But... Uh, okay, if we're going to fight a dragon, we're going to keep that potion. I, I think I'm going to get rid... Well, I suppose we might need like a stealthy potion. We're not going to need Charisma. Uh, if, see, I might need these things. I want to take another Potion of Healing. I'm slightly worried about getting robbed and losing it all. I guess... I'm leaving that. I'm leaving that. Can 
don't want to minimize our losses, but take everything that we might need. Oh, wait, we got another suit of plate armor. Ha ha! I knew there was a reason I kept that. Good. Um. Play armor. Put that in the stash. Right. Okay. Feel better. Better equipped now. If we can get a better quality bow, that would be good. But I don't think I've seen any blue quality bows anywhere yet. So. All right. Do we, what do we do? Do we just sail up the river? Retrace our steps and hope we do. Oh God, but if we roll that stupid guy who takes our resurrection deal again, that is such a massive pain. We could try going to the other location instead, maybe. I, don't, I guess the river is the fastest way to get up there, so. Sure, travel up river. Uh, journey at river. Maybe I should disembark here. We never got off at Delpton before. And then travel cross country. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. The village of Delpton flourishes by the shipping of grain downriver to Ringhorn. Delpton Market is small by the standards of the great cities of the south coast, but you may find some useful knickknacks. Um, oops. Market. What knickknacks do you have? An ink pot. Copper pot, fishing hook. There's some random stuff. Why would we need these things? I don't know, but we're not going to take them now. Uh, tavern. Uh, let's buy some drinks. You overhear a storyteller regaling a group of farmers from a nearby village with his tall tales. He tells the story of a woodcutter who fell asleep one afternoon and awoke to find it was dark. Having lost his way, he was very frightened, but then he saw smoke over the treetops. Going on, he reached a camp where slim young gypsy maidens were dancing around a fire. With smiles and merry laughs, they invited the woodcutter to join them. Now it so happened that the woodcutter's grandmother had been a gypsy, and she taught him the traditional greeting that he now called out. Za Divlesa, which is to say, may the gods be with you. No sooner had the maidens heard this than they all collapsed like matchwood. And creeping closer, the woodcutter saw that there were just piles of mouldering bones in the clearing, and not living people at all. It's our dev laser. I'm going to forget that if I ever need that. So you know what he did, concludes the storyteller. He climbed an oak tree, and he stayed there shivering until dawn, because he knew that no ghost can follow you up an oak tree. The day's wearing on, and it is time you are on your way. Or, if we find a ghost, we climb an oak tree. Maybe. Ooh. A merchant is packing to leave at the same time that you are. You travel through Castle Raven quite a bit, I suppose, he says. We can expect to change there quite soon, I hear. What sort of change? The new head of the House of Raven. The Knight of the Long Knife is plotting against that young Sprat Vanner. I knew that. Not that I care one way or the other. Merchants may be no better than thieves, as people say. But in that case, the nobility are even worse. They're thugs. I agree. The thugs and thieves. Uh, so what did that change in the log? I'm gonna get an epic item. Um, oh, so now we know who is behind it. Right, okay. So if we go back there, we can turn that in. Okay, but we're not gonna go back there now. Uh, we are going to... do we explore? Yeah, I'm gonna leave. We're gonna go cross country. You're traveling on an old stone road. Carved limestone monoliths occur at intervals of seven leagues, each with an inscription marking the distance to, high king, to the High King's seat. Pilgrims. The pilgrims are on their way to the Abbey of Lacuna, the goddess of the moon. I am not an initiate of Lacuna. So nothing happens. Wheatfields is the very heart of the fertile countryside of Golnir and forms the hub of trade to the hinterland. You can buy a townhouse here for a hundred shards. 
A visit to Wheatfield's market is a noisy, bustling affair. You force your way through crowds of farmers who have come to trade their cattle. Outside the taverns, merchants from the south lean eagerly across the tables as they discuss the year's grain prices. In the market. is a silver holy symbol. which is an improvement on what we've currently got. Uh, the venison is cheaper as well, I think. Uh, you soon learn that the best buys locally are grain and furs. Yeah, I'm not sure I want to invest right now. Temple. Uh, so we could have come here for a resurrection arrangement, although we wouldn't have had the money. So this would actually have been a good place to buy a house. Uh, maybe it still would be if we can make a little bit of money. And then we can just come back here, access our stash and get a new resurrection arrangement. Um, but now... Let's continue on the road east. The road wends its way past countless numbers of farms, passing through villages where the peasants live well on their bountiful harvests. An ogre with three heads emerges from behind a rock, casting his net to entangle you. His three heads converse on the topic of how you should be cooked. Boiled, declares the head with lurid red eyes. Pa, stewed, asserts the head with tusks. Roasted, surely, suggests the smallest head. Join in the discussion or try to free yourself. <laughs> you ask for your opinion, growls the tusked head. The other two heads, however, think you have a point. A fierce argument ensues and finally the red-eyed head butts the tusked head so hard that both are knocked out. You climb out of the net and start to walk away. The ogre holds up a finger uncertainly. Uh, excuse me, says the tiny head. What am I going to say to Tusker and Stairface when they wake up? Tell them to stick to eating rabbits in future. Okay, good. That was the right choice. Uh, Texian Tavern. Or Goldfall. Let's go to the tavern. A tavern squats beside a mill pond. Weeping willows shade the tables in the beer garden at the back. It looks an inviting place to spend a few days. A few days, okay. Uh, I was just going to ask for some rumours. Texian, this innkeeper, is a wingless mannequin who dress dresses in a brocade waistcoat and affects human mannerisms. Uh, but there is no... rumours. Monastery of Mulhern or Goldfall? Um, well, I guess while we're here we can go to the monastery, sure. Mulhern is the blacksmith of the gods, famous for his cleverness and the breadth of his knowledge. Here at the monastery, his most devout adherents live an austere existence striving to honour the god through a regimen of hard physical labour combined with their academic study. If you are injured, this is a good place to rest and recuperate from your wounds. I'm not, but could there be anything else here? The monks must first approve you to gain admittance. I am charm angel, charming self. Um, study at the monastery, pray to Mulhern, talk to the abbot. Let's talk to the abbot. The abbot is pleased to tell you about the god Mulhern. Originally, he was the god of craftsmen, blacksmiths, and stonemasons, he says. It was Mulhern who gave mankind the secret of making fire. But he also taught the secret of writing, which is why he is the patron deity of scholars. Our library here is the most magnificent in the world. Apparently, there is a man with a velvet eye patch that we know nothing about. Um, if, so if we see one, we should go back. Study at the monastery. You spend weeks in meditation and study. Books alone are not enough. You must also study the secret patterns of nature, says the monk in charge of the scriptorium. Here, take this. It might help you on your journey. He hands you a potion of intellect, plus one magic. Complete the set. Taking this advice to heart, you set out again on your travels. Okay, let's head back to the tavern and then north. Uh, move straight on to Gulfall. Goldfall is a ramshackle town. The buildings are in poor repair. The livestock wanders untended in the fields. 
The reason is that most people who live here are just transients. They come from far and wide because of the stories that chunks of gold shower from the sky on certain nights. You pass a beggar squatting beside the town square and ask if he ever found any gold. Nope, he says. I heard of a bloke that got rich from finding three nuggets each as big as your fist. Got any spare change? Alright, Temple Explore Inn. These are very small settlements out in Golney. Um, Temple of the Three Fortunes. The Three Fortunes of the Goddesses of Fate who weave the tapestry of all men's lives. Placard outside the temple declares, join the temple and see your luck change overnight. Uh, okay, the priestesses come forward to ask your business. From the back of the temple you can hear the sound of dice rattling on a wooden table. Uh, we must be beloved of the Three Fortunes before we can participate in the Preach. Uh, blessing is extremely expensive. So we will not take one of those. I thought we already had a luck bl Oh no, we lost all of our blessings, didn't we? By the dodgy guy in the mountains. Um, gamble. An inner room of the temple is given over to gambling games. You suspect this is where most of the locals' wealth ends up. You must pay five shards to join in a game. At the far end of the room, a placard reads, Sacred Games Initiates Only. Uh, so I cannot join the Sacred Games. Are we going to gamble? We're going to gamble. Uh, okay, you can gamble in multiples of ten shards. I am going to bet ten. I'm going to bet 20. Place my bet. Roll the dice. 6. Lose 50% of your stake. Ugh. Okay, no more gambling. Gambling is bad. No gamble, kids. Uh, we can search for gold or go back. Search for gold, why not? You go out into the meadows as soon as the sun rises. Early as you are, the place is already teeming with other prospectors and you are forced to make do with a patch of hard soil that you sift through until late afternoon. You've almost given up hope when you dig up a speck of gold worth two shards. What confounded luck, says a nearby prospector. That means there's a good chance of a large nugget buried there somewhere. You want to go on digging, but the daylight is going. I'll help you dig first thing tomorrow if you like, says the prospector as you walk back to town. Uh This all seems a bit sus. Sure. You go out the next day and the next. Sometimes you find a tiny bit of gold. More often you come back to town empty-handed. And each day you swear that unless you strike it rich on the morrow you are going to give up looking. But it is too late. You have gold fever. Oh my god. You spend all your money on gadgets that are supposed to help with prospecting. Copper sieves, dowsing rods, gold sensitive ferrets and so on. After six weeks you have nothing to show for it. You are flat broke and the gadgets you bought are worse than useless. Sourly you pack up and leave town, vowing never to return. Everything in Golnir is a confidence job and steals your money and your stuff. I'm gonna burn down the whole province. Maybe I can get the dragon to burn it down for me. Um, this sucks. I've got no money. Okay, well, we are gonna press on north anyway. And we're gonna find that dragon and we're gonna kill him. And we're gonna loot his horde. I'm gonna get a load of money from that. That's the plan. Do I stop here? This seems like a kind of market which is going to be useless to me. But I guess, yeah, sure, actually. Let's see what's there. Uh, the farmers in these parts are ready cheeked and jolly, always ready with a firming stoop of ale and a cheery chat. If you took up every other offer of hospitality, you would never reach your destination. A country fair. You cannot resist the temptation to stop off at the fair. Two whole fields are covered with gaudily coloured tents and stalls where you can watch juggling acrobatics, dancing bears and singing birds. Get drunk on nettle beer. You underestimated the potency of the local brew. You wake up in a ditch with a pounding headache. It is mid-morning and the fair is packing up. You have lost half your money, haha, <laughs> but have somehow managed to acquire a candle, a silver horseshoe, and an exotic feather. Nice. Well, that's one advantage of having zero shards. A uh, candle, horseshoe, and a feather. 
whatever they are going to be good for. Maybe selling for money. You're travelling cross-country in eastern Golnir in the rolling hills that sweep down towards the broad river valley of the Grim. A horse trader tells you that the town of Goldfall is close at hand. See this scar on my forehead, he says, pulling off his straw hat. A nugget fell from the sky and brained me, so it did. But a villain made off with my nugget while I lay stretched out senseless on the grass. Yeah, you're a liar and a scoundrel as well. You're all scoundrels. Um... Yeah, I think this is stuff that we can sell. For now, we will hang on to it and we will head to the Rainbow River. You follow the course of the frothing Rainbow River as it tumbles across flat glistening stones and boulder-strewn rapids. Oh god, gypsy camp. The gypsies offer to sell you a rabbit's foot charm for 30 shards. It bring you good luck, friend, insists a grinning old woman with a face like a walnut. Well, it might, but I have no money, so I can do nothing. We are going to head up. To uh, the abbey, the forest, the waterfall, the waterfall. You come to a pool at the bottom of a waterfall. Here a fine spray hangs in the air like sparkling mist. The longer you look at it, the more you imagine you can see dancing figures outlined in the mist. Above the roar of the waterfall, you seem to hear soft voices calling out to you. Leave now. <laughs> Fairies, probably, and we know what their kind does to you. Do I head back to the haunted hills? God, it's where I've got to go. At least I've got no blessings to lose this time. But losing my resurrection deal is really, really expensive. But I think that's where we need to go, so back we go. Uh, please God, not a five to six. Twelve. A hungry ghost. The ghost of a man who died of starvation in these hills steals down on you in the night. It is barely visible as a grey film against the stars, and even though your eyes flicker open, you take no notice. It waits till you roll over and go back to sleep, then creeps closer. Time to see if your innate holiness keeps the ghost at bay until dawn. Ooh, that's a pretty poor chance of success. Can we... Oh, we didn't bring our sanctity potion, did we? Oh no, fail. While you sleep, the ghost gnaws at your leg. Having died of starvation, it is driven to eternally crave flesh. You feel nothing, but the ghost is not sated until you've lost nine stamina points. You wake at dawn to find your leg horribly mauled, only then do you recall the wispy grey visitation that at the time you took to be a dream. Flippin' heck. These mountains are... Phenomenally dangerous. <sighs> so we could go up. map the spine of Harkoon <laughs> and then come down here and try our luck again oh god do we use our potion we got two healing potions and no shards um hmm Two healing potions and no shards. I don't know whether to use one now or not. They don't actually sell these in many places. Um... We're going to regret it if we don't, aren't we? 
Consume. Spine of Harcoon. No idea what's up here. You're traversing the Spine of Harcoon mountain range. Distantly against the sky, you can see the massive bulk of Sky Mountain. The forked, snow-clad peak resembles a crone's broken tooth. According to legend, the, mon the moon once caught on the peak and the mannequin people had to fly up to break it loose. No human has ever scaled Sky Mountain as far as you know. A Hydra. A thick serpentine body with many heads rises up from behind the rocks. The venom spilling from its jaws produces plumes of acidic vapor where it touches the ground. Can we take it on? I don't know. I'm finding Golnir a lot harder than I expected to. Like the skill checks, I thought we would be acing them. And we're really not. I don't like running away from a fight though. So we're gonna f fight it. Each time you slice through one of the Hydra's necks, it grows another head. You soon see that the only way to defeat it is to strike at the point where all the necks join the body. I still need potions and blessings. I just don't want to get the blessings back while I'm coming up in this area and I might encounter the guy that just gets rid of them all again. Because losing the, the resurrection deal is already fabulously expensive and if I'm going to lose like five blessings at the same time, that just makes it even more expensive. Um, okay, 13 stamina. Not too bad. Got range two. <laughs> Might just kill our bear in one shot. I wish the bear could move and attack, but he can't. Alright, mark you as prey, shoot you. Oh god. Shoot you. Shoot you, okay, thank god for that. At least the bear slowed him down a bit. The Hydra's bites were venomous, but it didn't manage to injure you at all during the battle. You search the Hydra's lair. Its treasure consists of 700 shards, a great axe, and a suit of ringmail, and a candle. Another candle. And a Hydra tooth. Uh, okay, Hydra tooth, we will have that. Uh, this we could sell for a decent amount of money. How much space have we got? One more thing. Not the candle, the ringmail then, I guess. Oh my god, though, now I'm carrying 700 shards around in the wilderness. That seems like not a good idea. I don't want to go north. I don't want to go to the steps. I am terrified of carrying 700 shards. This guy makes the dragon fight in the dragon area before that really tough. Uh, the, the one who loses your blessing. I guess rid of your blessing. So yeah, so presumably he is in here. I t yeah, it's probably not the time to be... <sighs> yeah, I do wonder if I want to go... Where was it? Here? I wonder if I get back down here and I set up a... I buy a house there. I deposit my money there and then I'm, I'm just so much closer. Oh, if I lose the resurrection deal again. I think that makes a lot of sense, but how do I get back down there without losing my money? I don't want to go through the haunted hills. I don't know what's this way though. 
or to the north of the tower. Or even how to get from the tower down to here. I suppose I can go, if I can get here, I can get a boat down to here and then just go across. So maybe I do that. I should be trying to do the mapping quest at the same time. Hijacked peaks tumble up to the verge of heaven. Legend has it that this mountain range is exposed backbone of the slaughtered god Harkoon. As you clamber up a steep trail, you see a waterfall gushing from high above. Something metallic glitters in the rock face where the waterfall issues out. You know, I'm going to come back for another look another time because I don't want to take any risks right now. In the central part of the limestone mountains separating the Golnir from the Great Steps, I do not have a map of the mountains. No one has ever made a comprehensive map. If you wish to attempt it, you will need to explore this region and the peaks extending off to the east. To do this, you must first possess a parchment. Ah, that's what the parchment's for. Ah, well, obviously that's what parchment would be for. Okay. Uh, yes, we will buy. Oh, no, we can't. Okay, well, we can sell. Sell the ring mill. Uh, we can sell the candle by parchment. Uh, however, I am still going to sail down river. Disembark at Dalton. Leave. We went the old road last time. I feel like you're more likely to be robbed on the road. Mm, go back that way anyway. Five pilgrims. Uh, okay, no event, no effect again. Okay. Buy a house. Hundred bargain. Stash. Most of my money. Stash. 600. Um, I am also going to... I should have sold this as well. Well, you know what? I can ke I'll keep a supply of equipment just in case um, stuff gets nicked again. Tro a trophy's just good for selling. That's a trophy as well. What else was a trophy? That's a, so artifacts are quest items. But I think we've used that one now. Uh, hang on, that's alchemy as well. Let's put... Let's have a line for trophies. Trophies, trophies. Well, I don't know if I need to be carrying any of this stuff with me. Probably not, because if I'm carrying... These are not quest items, so actually, if, if I lose these, I suspect that's probably all right. Um, maybe they are just, we can sell them. Uh, and I can probably just sell that as well. Unless that does help me with luck rolls or something. I don't know whether there's equipment that does stuff silently in the background. Um... If I'm going to try the dragon again, I am going to take that. And... We've got two of these. Let's take one of those, in case we need to get the benefit, in case we encounter the ghost again and we need the benefit of that. Um... We need to go... Is there an inn? Why is there no inn here? I need to heal. How many arrows have I got? Let's buy three more. There's no better weapon, right? No. I could upgrade... Hmm. Silver holy symbol. That might actually be worth doing. Again, in case we encounter that ghost. Let's 
So buy three arrows. Ah, uh, we feels market. Let's get. So much do we need? Three hundred. Three fifty. Let's say. Uh, we can sell that holy symbol. We'll buy that one. Then we equip those in there. We equip that in there. Yeah, five. Okay. We deposit our money. Let's deposit. 31, let's leave us with 100. Okay. Let's do another full save. Alright. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to head back west, we're going to seal back up, we're going to try and do the mapping, and then we're going to come down back into the mountains, and we're going to try and find the dragon. That's the plan. Let's go. Pilgrims again. Delpton. Uh, go to the inn. Rest until fully healed. Leave. Explore. Travel up river. Stop off here. Leave. Up to the spine of Harcoon. Um. Okay, we can check this out now as well. A golden plaque is embedded in the rock face here. You clean away the grime with your finger, hoping to find an interesting message, but it seems to be gibberish. Or perhaps it is an inscription in the language of old Ataku, or is it some sort of cipher? <laughs> it's the classic thing where it used to be um, the typical alphabet ciphers, right? So you write down the alphabet one way, and then you write it down backwards the other way, uh, which would make that an a, make that a Y, yeah, maybe that's not right, maybe it's offset, A, Y, we go back one, say, okay, we go back one letter, is that a V, U, H, E, can't be right, oh, I thought I'd got it from that, uh, Back a letter, is that right? Did I do that right? Maybe that is a U. It's T T. T H. T H E. Yes, okay, that's a U. Oh my god, okay, it's gonna take me a while to figure this out. Uh, okay, so we've gone through this uh, here. The secret is that each letter needs to be replaced by the letter in the alphabet immediately before it. Uh, if we do that, we get the message the lake in Rainbow River. Pull the ring, take the left path, choose the green chest, say Magican, take the shield. Hopefully, that will become, it's meaning become obvious when we go to the lake in Rainbow River. Um, we do not have a map of the mountains, but we do have parchment. We will make a scouting roll. We will fail the scouting roll. We lose 11 stamina? Good grief. Making maps is dangerous. Uh, we should have used... Did we didn't have a blessing there, did we? Wow. This is dangerous work. Okay, I gotta go back and I gotta go heal up. Oh God, why? Why are there no places to heal here? Well, I guess we're taking a boat again. Might as well spend this money on something. Disembark, go to the inn, rest. I don't even think we can get a scouting 
blessing from near here. So do I just go back and try it again? It was a, a better than 50% chance. So let's just go back. Hang on a minute. We're going to go back there anyway. Uh, leave up to the mountains. N. I, J, K, L, M. M. M comes before N. So yeah, magic can. Right? <laughs> it's an N. I definitely got it right. I'm sure that I'm sure there's a type. It's probably just yeah. Maybe a typo. Maybe it's a mistake in the original books. I don't know. Uh, or maybe it's not a mistake at all. Maybe you are supposed to say magic and not magician. Right. M comes before N. This is the word that becomes magican. M A G I C A N. Okay, we're going to try this again. 58% chance, come on. Oh no, really? This time we lost 12 stamina? Alright, this is. Screw this map making business, this is way too hard. I need to get a scouting blessing from somewhere. Oh, back down river. Okay. Uh, disembark. Heal. We're going to try and find the dragon. Explore, travel up river. Actually, do we need, we don't even necessarily need to go this way. Actually, is this even the right... Well, we can go, yeah, we can go across country here, can't we? Haunted Hills. Okay, please... Don't let anything bad happen to us. We need to find this dragon. Eight. Outlaws. You are ambushed by a band of outlaws in wolf pelt jerkins. They jump up from behind a ridge. You see at a glance that they far outnumber you, but they make no move to attack. Their leader signals for his men to lower their crossbows before scrambling down from the ridge to speak with you. No offence, he says with a grin, but one lone wanderer isn't worth the trouble of robbing. Maybe you'd think differently if you could see inside your money pouch? Probably not. Or perhaps they are really put off because you look too tough to handle without casualties. See if you can impress them by making a thievery roll and a charisma roll both at a difficulty of 13. Thievery roll. We impress them with our thievery skills. Charisma roll. We impressed them with our charisma. Jesus. You're a man after my own heart, you tell the outlaw leader. He soon sees from your tales of skullduggery and daring adventure that you're in a higher league than his motley band of men. The outlaws ask you to stay and lead them for a while. Uh, yeah. Are you, do, do you want to you wanna assassinate this, um, this leader? You spend a couple of months with the outlaws, during which you have many opportunities to hone your questionable skills. You gain one thievery permanently. Your share of the loot amounts to 300 shards. We gain 300 shards. At last, you decide the time has come to move on. Many other adventures await you. The outlaws are all hard men, but they have learned to look up to you. Several shed genuine tears to see you leave. Nice. Actually, something good happened there. This is just, this is the, just the lake of death, though. Every bad thing happens here. Um, is this the, the Rainbow River? Actually, is this the Lake of the Rainbow River? That's the River Reese. That's was the Yellow River. Uh, I don't know whether that is the Rainbow River. Oh, God, we've got to try again, don't we? 
Let's go into the Forsaken Forest and see what's in there, given we've not been there. The Forest of the Forsaken is a dark, forbidden place. Forbidding place. Even in broad daylight, shadows cluster like a mass of cobwebs under the gnarled boughs. As you skirt the forest, searching for a path, you see a hamlet at the edge of the trees. A man looks up as you approach and starts to ring an iron bell. Warning, stranger. Let's go in. Unclean, warns the man, his voice just a ragged croak issuing from a mouth ravaged by sores. You are horrified by the realisation that you've strayed into a hamlet of lepers. Uh oh. We've got leprosy. You've got one point subtracted from each of your abilities. <laughs> Stay in the hamlet overnight or hurry on your way. Well, I've got leprosy, so I can't get worse leprosy, can I? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Was it the last letter that I got wrong? I was looking at the first letter. Uh, magical. Say magical. Say magical. Take the shield. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Your patience. Uh, yeah, I would, I'm gonna. I'm gonna warrant we can't get worse than than leprosy once. So I'm gonna stay in the hamlet overnight. You show the lepers you were not afraid to stay among them. They are grateful for your help in various chores they find difficult. You gain one sanctity permanently. Okay, that was worth it. The next day you set out on your way once more. As you go, one of the lepers warns you. In that direction lies the village of the bald ones. Don't trust them. They'd as soon slit your throat as look at you. The path by their village leads to the heart of the woods. A hamlet of wattle and daub cottages with thatched roofs nestles under the branches of the trees. Beside the hamlet, a path snakes off into the gloomy wood. Not far off, several bald peasants stop work and lean on their spades to watch you. Uh, so we are gonna... ignore them. Because they're the bald ones, so we're just gonna go along the path. Assuming we want to go to the heart of the woods. Do we want to go to the heart of the woods? Obviously we do. The path leads to a grassy glade beside a brook. Here, a knight has set up his pavilion. Encased from head to foot in plate armor, he sits astride his horse in silence while his dwarfish squire scurries forward on stunted legs to speak with you. It's the light knight of the long knife. My lord contests your right to use this path, the dwarf tells you. You must fight him or else turn back. You recall the story you ever heard about a dwarf that stole a suit of magic armor. This armor was empty but could still move and fight because it still contained an elfin ghost. Ah, okay. Uh, then we know what to do. We need to open the um, faceplate. You lash out, knocking the dwarf to the ground. As he sits cradling his head, you hurry over to the figure on horseback. As you lift the visor, a wisp of green smoke curls out and you hear a voice say, I thank you, mortal, for my freedom. The smoke disperses on the breeze, the armor is empty. You can also take plate armor and a great sword since the dwarf is in no fit state to stop you. Okay. Um, so that is a spare set of plate armor. We should get that back to our house. Um, and we're not going to equip the great sword. Stick with the axe. Continue along. I mean, we've got to keep going. The foliage around you is filled with eerie rustling noises. The boles of the trees are black and twisted with age. Before long, you come to a fork in the path. The lake in Rainbow River, pull the ring. Take the left path. Your left. The path wends its way between steep earthen banks from which the roots of trees protrude like ossified snakes. It brings you to a squat crypt built of green veined gray marble. Above the entrance rises a small pyramid with a stone eye carved into the summit. In the center of the eye sparkles an emerald as large as a duck's egg. I haven't done all these things that pulled a ring, unless it's all mixed up. Pull the ring, take the left path, choose the green chest. Say magical, take the shield. Choose the or choose the green. Does that mean get the emerald? I mean that just seems it just obviously seems like a trap. Yeah, 
Now make sure you bring a lantern when you go down there pulling rings. I have a lantern. Is that message referring to this? I don't know. I mean, it just feels like something bad is gonna happen if we try and get the emerald. That's just greed. Does they choose the green chest? I'm sure it's otherwise it would be chest same magical. Doesn't seem right. There's no ring to pull. I'm going into the crypt. Is this a good idea? Probably not. The interior of the tomb is lighted by a greyish glow. A corpse in ancient knightly regalia lies on a stone slab. Awakened by your approach, it sits up. Cobwebs veil its eye sockets and its skin looks like the bark of a dead tree. It extends an accusing finger. For disturbing my slumber, I should strike you dead where you stand, it intones in a gravid voice. But there is a way for you to earn a reprieve. When I was alive, I kept my treasure safe in a tower built of adamantine stone, the corpse tells you. The tower had an impregnable door that could only be unlocked by a key made of star metal. But my death sleep has been troubled by disquieting dreams. What if a living man should find the key and plunder my hoard? Uh, what is it you want of me? You find yourself asking, your voice sounding hollow in the stillness of the crypt. The corpse points past you, out to the south. Go and find the key of stars. Bring it back to me. Then I shall permit you to take a reward. As you leave, you hear its parting words. But take care not to return empty-handed. But then my vengeance would be swift and terrible. Okay, find the key of stars, bring it back. Go south. Okay. You make your way along the woodland trail at the point where three paths converge and iron gibbet hangs between two oaks. Uh, well, south was the way we were told to go, so south is the way we're going. A branch in the path to your left leads back out of the forest of the Forsaken. The way ahead is overhung by low moss, moss heath, moss heath boughs. Leave the forest. Carry on along the path or go back the way you came. We don't want to, we just think we want to keep going south, so keep following the path. The path, oh god, wait, what? The path wends its way between, blah, 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 we're back here again. No, don't enter the crypt or we will die. Go back and take the other path. Go south. Leave the forest. Okay, that is the Rainbow River. We did not find the dragon. We have leprosy. We have a load of money, which we should try and get back to our stash. But that is all that I've got time for right now. So until next time, thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. This is BDL. I'm signing out. Bye for now.